Welcome back to Health Call Live, where health information is free and the stethoscope is never cold. We're here to answer your questions at 447-1190. Now, back to health and wellness correspondent, Lee Kelso. We have been paying such close attention to COVID on this program for the past year or so. Uh, It's kind of sad that we have to come back around and do it all again. But the Delta variant is here. It is now making up over 90 percent of the cases now spotted in Indiana. So let's catch up on all of this with Dr. Matthew Sutter. He is the health commissioner for Allen County. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Lee. Good to talk to you again. I appreciate you joining us. So tell me what's going on here locally. Do we know exactly where we stand on whether or not we're going to have to go back into any type of restrictions? Yeah, I'm not sure we know that yet. I mean, you had said uh, it's a shame that we're back here talking about this. It feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? It does. Um, I, I thought we were going to have a nice, easy summer, but it doesn't seem to be that case. So. Um, you know, what we're seeing is our cases are up uh, quite a bit. In fact, our, our uh, weekly, our, our seven-day average of cases is now up into the 70s. When you look at the middle of June, we were down into single digits uh, for uh, an entire day before they started moving back up. So we've seen about a seven to 800% increase in cases over the last six weeks. Um, and perhaps uh, more concerningly, we've also seen an increase in hospital admissions, about a 400 to 500% increase uh, since the end of June, which was the lowest. So, you know, we're definitely seeing the early parts of a surge. Our positivity rate's up. Uh, we've gone from blue to yellow, and we're now getting close to orange on the state's thing. And the CDC just announced their map, which, as best I can tell, uses the White House task force uh, from um, from previous year's uh, thresholds, and we're in high transmission based on their criteria. We are in high transmission. Yes, that's correct. So that, that says that uh, by CDC guidance, we even vaccinated people should be wearing masks indoors. Is that correct? Yeah, that's their that's their guidance, and that's a switch from what they'd said earlier. Um, so yes, based on their current guidance as of this past week, um, the recommendation is that we're masking indoors, despite uh, regardless of vaccination status. So what would it take, as the the health commissioner, you have the authority to order capacity reductions? I understand, and some other local restrictions. What what would it take to push us over into those sta- conditions? Yeah, so interestingly enough, the state legislature has, um, you know, changed that process. So I no longer have the sole authority to do that. Um, I have the authority to issue an order, but it has to be approved by uh, the county commissioners. Um, to me, and, you know, the, and what I'd said last fall, a lot of this centers around overwhelming the hospital system. Um, you know, we were very close to that last fall um, when I was talking to the, um, you know, the, the representatives from the hospitals and having our regular meetings. Um, we got very close to the brink of overwhelming our health care system. Um, and in that case, I think restrictions are not just appropriate, they're, they're really required. Um, the common thought has been that we've got enough vaccination in the over 65 that we're unlikely to overwhelm the health care system. But, you know, we didn't really anticipate this rise in admissions. So watching that closely, but to me, that's the red line. Um, we cannot overwhelm our health care system um, because not only does that mean a much higher death rate for COVID patients, it, it means a potentially higher death rate for all patients who come in are very sick. So what, what kind of guidance can you give people who are planning weddings, family celebrations, uh, restaurant tours, convention centers, those kinds of things? Do you, at this point, have any indication that we're going to be scaling back or having to put new restrictions in place? Yeah, I just don't know yet. I mean, that, that's the most honest answer. Uh, I think we're early into this, um, and we'll need to see what happens with admissions and what happens with cases. I mean, if we're seeing clear areas of transmission and big clusters of cases, you know, the first line of defense with that is education and, and hoping people take personal responsibility. But if we find that they're not doing that and we're getting uh, in the vicinity of overwhelming the health care system, then I think we'd have to have restrictions. The CDC is saying that they are making preparations for a third dose of vaccine if that is becoming the, the recommendation. Are you seeing any indication that steps are moving in that direction? 
Yeah, so ACIP, which is the independent committee for the FDA that, um, that advises them on vaccine practices, all vaccine practices, not just COVID-19 vaccines, we met last week, and there was support for a third shot for immunocompromised people, but they stopped short of a formal recommendation. So that kind of leaves it in limbo. They, I think they were looking for more data before they made a formal recommendation. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there is at some point a recommendation for a third shot for immunocompromised people. You know, people who are on chronic steroids, people who have an organ transplant, or on other immunosuppressives. Um, it's a small percentage of the population, but, you know, there's, there's some evidence that they don't form the same antibody response that people with normal immune systems do. Uh, it's less clear what their T-cell response is, and th- that's kind of the two parts of the immune response, the, the antibodies, which are from B-cells, and then the T-cells. And the T-cells are super important in, you know, determining whether things advance to severe disease, and the vaccines seem to be do, doing pretty well with that. Mm-hmm. The good news is we're not seeing tons of immunocompromised people who have had two shots who are coming in and getting sick and dying. Uh, it's not that it's never happening, but it's not happening in large numbers. So I keep reading that, uh, based on some studies out of India and elsewhere, that this virus, this variant, Delta, produces over 1,000 times the viral load. So you just carry more virus with you all the time if you are infected. If that is the case, check me on this. It just seems to me that a a poorly fitted mask really isn't going to make all that much difference. What's your sense of that? Well, so, you know, there's one study outside the United States which has been very influential. It's a preprint, and and it's looking at one outbreak in China that was very well documented. And what they found is on the initial positive test, the RNA level was about a thousand times what they'd seen with previous variants. It's very concerning, and that's, prob- you know, that's the current hypothesis about you know, why Delta is spreading so much more easily, why it's so quickly become the dominant variant. Um, certainly that challenges lots of things. If, you've got, if that translates to viral load, it hasn't been proven yet, but, but is reasonable, um, it does mean that there's just a lot more virus to spread. It's not all the way through the illness. It's at the beginning, um, but we don't know those curves just yet. So will a poorly fitted mask stop transmission? You know, probably not. But is it better than no mask at all? Well, probably. I mean, I, a lot of this to me is, is uh, the analogy I've been using is like noise-canceling headset. You know, they don't, if, if your neighbor's playing loud music, a noise-canceling headset may block that out and you may, may you know, yeah. have peace and quiet. But if your neighbor starts jackhammering the sidewalk, it's probably not gonna. It's probably not gonna stop that. But it is gonna. It is gonna diminish it. And I think that's probably what masking does. Um, will it completely stop it? Don't know. If it's poorly fitted, it's gonna do less well. Um, but it's probably better than nothing. Yeah, I guess the, I get that. It's it's better than nothing. So I keep reading that the Delta symptoms are different. That it is headache, cough fever, fatigue, muscle pain. So that sounds a heck of a lot like a cold or the flu. Uh, we're, uh, people are not going to turn up and go get tested when they have those symptoms. So is it, my sense is, again, check me if I'm wrong, it seems like we're just never really going to know how widely spread this thing is. So it's a challenge. Um, I have heard those reports, but again, I've also heard, you know, local reports and talking to colleagues of the whole variety of symptoms. So from my perspective, Delta can have all the symptoms that COVID did before, which is all over the place. So it can be kind of cold symptoms, flu symptoms, but also, you know, GI symptoms like vomiting and diarrhea. And some of the times we're seeing that with Delta. So, uh, this is also complicated by the fact that because we've stopped masking and social distancing and everybody's kind of gone back to life as normal, all our respiratory viruses are back up. So common cold is back up and RSV is up mm-hmm. and influ- or in- influenza, not so much parainfluenza, which causes croup in kids and just kind of a cold in adults. You know, all those are way up. So it's kind of hard to know whether you've got, if you get sick, whether you've got COVID or not without getting a test. So is your recommendation, if you have any symptoms at all, get tested? 
I think it's reasonable to do. We've got we've got tests available, so it's not like things were uh, early in the pandemic where testing was was at a premium. It's relatively easy to get a test now, and and you can walk into you know to the health department for one place. But um, there's lots of testing available, so I think it's reasonable if you have a question. Um, we certainly would like to identify COVID early so that people can isolate and and keep from spreading it. I mean that's what's that's what's driving this increase in cases right now is people getting it uh, knowingly or unknowingly and uh, then spreading. Certainly, if you had a positive contact, if somebody tests positive and you've been in close contact with them inside their infectious period and you get any symptoms at all, I would strongly recommend you get tested. All right. We'll leave it there. I thank you so much for joining us. I hope you'll be back again as, as conditions warrant. That is Dr. Matthew Sutter, Health Commissioner for Allen County. Appreciate your time. Hey, thanks, Lee. Have a great day. I will do just that. Hey, so coming up uh, after the break, we are going to be talking about concussions. And the reason is we're getting into fall sports season, and we want you to know about how you can protect yourself, prevent concussions, and prepare your brain for that impact. We'll do that with Matt Campbell from Midwest Concussion Clinic next on the Health Call Live Radio Hour on WoWo. Podcasts by Federated Media.